so listen, this is um, usually a, you know, laid back, catch a wave and write it wherever we want. Uh, but you wrote a book that um, I'm going to use a very violent term. Okay. But I mean it in the most endearing way. Okay. It impaled my heart. Wow. Like I can't even, even thinking about it makes me emotional in a very, very, um, uh, in a very good way. Uh, but you wrote a book about uh, essentially returning to the reverential fear of God. Yes, sir. And it's called the awe of God. Yes. And so, um, and I'm grateful that you named it the awe of God and not the fear of God, because I think some people would have been too afraid to pick it up. Correct. <laughs> Correct. But um, And that was the reason we did that. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> grateful for your team and whoever, right, that, that makes those smart decisions. Um, but I want to hear from your heart uh, about um, what went behind the burden to write this book. Gosh, Tim, there's so many places, and I'm glad we've got time, but this all began for me in 1994. I just saw the fear of the Lord, and, and let's just let's just get it out on the table so everybody doesn't start saying, I'm not listening to this one. <laughs> what we've done is we've done a grave mistake, and we've put all fears into a bucket and mm. called it destructive fears. Mm. I want to submit to everybody that there are constructive fears and there are destructive fears. Wow. Let me give you an example. All fear produces wisdom, correct? Correct. All right. The fear of being mauled by a mother grizzly bear will give me the wisdom to not mess with her little cubs in front of her. That fear actually will save my life. Now, Absolutely. that fear can go to destructive in the fact that I won't even take a walk in the woods because I fear that grizzly. Now, mm. it's destructive. Mm. So, let's first of all put all destructive fears in this bucket that we're going to address. There is a fear that eradicates totally does away with all destructive fears, including the most destructive fear, and that is called the fear of man. And that is, and the fear of the Lord is what does it. So wow. let's continue to alleviate any destructive fears in people right now. Yep, yep, yep. The fear of the Lord has nothing to do with being scared of God. Right. Okay, that's so important. All right, why do I say that? God's number one desire is to be intimate with us. Right. Okay. How can we be intimate with somebody we're scared of? It's Can't. impossible. That's right. That's exactly so right. So God is not going to advocate fear, the fear of the Lord, yep. if he knows it's going to hinder intimacy. Right. All right. Now let's talk about how important this is. Isaiah 33 verse 6 says that the fear of the Lord is God's treasure. Mm. Okay. Now just stop. Mm. Everybody listening, do you guys have... Do you have treasures? What do you do with your treasures? Do you like throw them on the front lawn? Do you nope. put them in your junk drawer? Nope. You make sure that they're protected, they're handled correctly. That's right. Fear of the Lord's God treasure. Isaiah eleven three. the fear of the Lord was Jesus's delight. Mm. So, and it talks about wisdom. It talks about counsel, knowledge, understanding. It talks about uh, one other, I, I can't remember right now. I, I, anyway, it said, but his delight was the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Now let's move over to Paul the Apostle, who we love so much, right? Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Not loving kindness, fear and trembling. Wow. So we're wow. talking about God's treasure, Jesus' delight, and what matures our salvation. Mm. Why aren't we talking about this more? Yeah. And I think we should talk about this as much as we talk about the love of God, because both are extremely yes. Important. Absolutely correct. So back in 1994, Tim, I'm asked to this church conference, and it's a big, big church. Actually, the biggest church in the whole area and very well known. Yep. And I'm doing Thursday and Friday night for their church conference. And Thursday night, I had been studying the fear of the Lord because I thought, I'm seeing this too much in the scripture, and I, I never hear anything about it. Mm. So I'm just doing a personal Bible study. Mm. <laughs> in front of everybody. <laughs> no, no, the Holy oh. Spirit speaks to me, and I'd never spoken on it in public because I'm just trying to learn it yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you were doing this for you. <clears throat> so the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, I want you to speak on it tonight. Yeah, Tim. I'm like, okay. So with a little bit of trepidation, I do it. And it's, you know, it's, it's very... Very lighthearted. Yep. Very much not going anywhere 
damaging or right, or, right, right. Because next... you had just waded into the water yourself. Correct. Right, exactly. Okay, right. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the <laughs> next night, the the last night of the conference, which was, which which was Friday night, the pastor gets up to do what I think is going to be a routine introduction. And he said, folks, John preached error last night, and I want to protect you from it. And he said, he gave us an Old Testament doctrine. You had to fear the Lord in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, we are told perfected love casts out fear. And we are told that God's not given us a spirit of fear. I'm sitting on the front row, and Tim, I'm thinking, this is, this is actually not happening. This is a nightmare. I'm going to wake up from this. But it's really happening. And then I thought, okay. And he actually stands up my wife and says, you're welcome back here and says nothing to me. And then, <clears throat> and then um, to my shock, utter shock, Tim, he introduced me to come <gasps> preach again. I mean, I'm thinking, okay, he's going to preach tonight. I'll sit here and just go back to the hotel after this. He introduced me. It's the hardest message I've ever preached in my life. And I went back to the hotel the next morning. Okay, I, can, can I just, can we, can, can we slow down real quick? Yeah, slow it down. Because <clears throat> we have some young preachers aspiring to ministry. How do you still get up after that? Because <clears throat> you, 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 I know you to be a brave man. The fear of God will eradicate all other fears it wasn't easy i'll be the first to say that but i knew i had an assignment i knew there were people there that were hungry i knew he was i knew he was misinformed Mm. he was confusing the spirit of fear with the holy fear of god and i just had to get up and put all my feelings aside and just share Mm. and i and i will say it's probably one of the shorter messages i preached (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) but but this is when, where it gets interesting. Yeah. The next morning, I was in this hotel complex, and there was a construction site. Now, Saturday morning, there's no construction workers. I went down to that construction site, and I said, God, I'm so sorry. I've hurt your church. Please, please forgive me. What, what have I done wrong? How have I hurt them? And what I found was not the discipline of the Lord in my heart. I felt the pleasure of the Lord. And before that time was up, I found myself crying out to know the holy fear of God. That's when it started for me. Wow. So it was 30 years ago next year. Yep. Just a little bit of history. Church doesn't exist anymore, and the pastor's not in ministry anymore. It's heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. Now, wow. that brings us to something I'll get to down the road in our discussion, probably. Yep. The fear of the Lord is what gives us longevity. I, I know that... When I was young in ministry, the first thing I looked at is, how big is this man's church? How big is this conference? Now that I'm 64 in a couple weeks, Mm -hmm. first thing I look at when I walk in is, what's this man's children like? What's his wife like? I, I have so become aware that longevity is a challenge. 